My dear, loyal and totally steadfast brothers, the parts of the Risale Nur with which our martyr is happily busy in the inner matter realm, which were as though written to work in his place and to make me work, arrived just at the right time, together with the three sweet roots of the Madrasa Yusufiya and three portions of the Quran, which produce thousands of sacred fruits. It will be appropriate if two heroic people write out the eleventh topic in the same way that they wrote out the two fruits so well and if they are sent together with four or five copies of the Hizb Nuriya, if there are any, and five or six copies of the Hizb Quraniya, and Husrev's letter should be appended to the eleventh topic. This time, I am sending you a piece about the subtle points showing the inimitability of two or three Quranic verses as a companion and an addendum to Ayat al-Kursi. It is incomplete since I have not yet received any sign that I should complete it. It was written in great haste. Significant mysteries appeared, but it was not written clearly and openly so as to avoid worldly matters. If you like, you can add it as a supplement to the addendum at the end of the eleventh topic. You can write it out as well as the piece on Surah Al-Falaq is added to the treatise, the miraculousness of the Quran. My brothers, don't be anxious. It seems absolutely certain to me that we are the recipients of grace and that outside our own will and power we are being employed by a hidden hand in a most important task. On numerous occasions we have manifested the meaning of the verse. It may be that you detest a thing, but it is good for you. In this work, the hardships are few and the recompense great. My dear loyal brothers, I have received your gifts like felicitous fruits of paradise and your good names from the region of Denizli. The many tasks I have on hand at the moment do not allow me to say much. I have had to cut this short and write quickly since the person who brought it is living at once. Firstly, the 1344 for a handhold most sure at the banging of the piece is wrong. But if the two hamzas and the elongation are not counted it is not wrong, it is most meaningful. 1347 is correct, which was anyway written at the end of the piece. The remaining section is both very significant, but because it looks to this world and the elect in, indeed man is overweening, looks to the idol in the piece, it has not been written for now. And secondly, the index of the fourth ray, about for us God suffices, should take the place of the fourteenth herb of the treatise for the elderly. It does seem to be appropriate and is indeed a herb. Thirdly, the 28th point of the 28th flesh should be placed at the end of the 15th word, not in the same index, for they discuss the same truth. Fourthly, I have corrected the fleshes collection that the late Hafiz Ali wrote out. God willing, it will be sent to you soon. While correcting the paradisical prison fruits of those happy heroes recently, the treatise seemed to me to be so powerful and valuable that I should it out. If the distress we suffered in prison had been a hundred times greater, the benefits produced by the fruits of belief have been a hundred times more numerous. The most upright people have come to believe through it, and it has caused itself to be read in the widest circles. I exclaimed, You unfortunates who determined me, you do what you like. It doesn't bother me. Whatever we suffered was insignificant. It was pure divine favor and mercy, and was consoled. We sent greetings to all the Ritalinur students and pray for their well-being. Said Nursi. This petition was sent to three departments of government, a source of reference for my brothers there. I want you to listen to the complaints of someone who for twenty years has suffered patiently in silence. The Republican government allows the widest possible freedom, yet I am deprived of every liberty and my enemies freely persecute me in every way. Since the government guarantees freedom of conscience and freedom of thought and scholarship, 
It should either offer me full protection and silence my ill intentions, suspicious enemies, or allow me the freedom to write like my enemies and not forbid my defense. For secret official orders have evidently been given to the post offices to abstract all my correspondence. And now, just when no one other than the single child who brings me bread and water is permitted to meet with me, and I was awaiting our acquittal by the court of appeal, and expecting the return of my books which the experts committee appointed by the court had applauded, my opponents of many years have seized the opportunity and passed one or two of my confidential treatises that are nothing to do with me to one or two members of the new experts committee who due to their profession are opposed to me and have now drawn up a derogatory report against me. My patience and endurance are exhausted. So, I proclaim to the members of the Republican government and to the whole world even. By virtue of the mystery of the all-wise Quran's truth and of its miraculous inimitability, the program of myself and of the Risale Nur and our way and its fruits which we have striven for and seen, and our objective and goal, is through a certain affirmative belief, iman tahkiki, to save unfortunates from the eternal nothingness of death, and to protect this blessed nation from every sort of anarchy. The last twenty years of my life, and the one hundred and thirty parts of the risale Nur, furnish incontrovertible proof that the risale Nur which has been scrutinized by three experts' comedies and three courts of law, includes nothing that intentionally infringes any worldly matters or governments or public security. As I have stated in the courts and as is affirmed by all my friends with whom I am in touch, this wretched, oppressed side has never in 20 years applied to the government, and for the last 10 years, with one or two exceptions, has not known the members of the government, and for the last four years has neither been informed about nor curious about the world's war and its events. Is it at all possible that I should contend with politicians, interfere with government, or want to disturb public order? If I had had the slightest inclination to do those things, I would have tried to discover potential opponents and what was going on in the world, and who would assist me. I would have been curious and meddlesome, and would have tried with trickery to ingratiate myself with the powerful. A minor but most upsetting incident was as follows. I wrote a secret letter to my friends, telling them to find some pretext to have me sent to prison so that I could be saved from my total isolation, deprived of all correspondence, and I could be delivered from this torment. I sent a letter by hand in the hope that I would be close to my books from the Risale Nur that were in the court at Denizli and are my life's capsule and results and are decorated in the finest manner and I could try to have them returned. But regrettably just one member of the experts committee there who was hostile to me saw the letter although he was defending me and was compelled to judge against my being sent to prison. Another of the pretexts of my enemies who had me cast into prison was Sufism, of which I had been acquitted by that court. However, in the Risale Nur I said, The present is not the time for Sufism, it is the time to save belief. For many people go to paradise without Sufism, but none go there without belief, and I have worked with all my strength for the cause of belief. I am a teacher, I am not a sheikh. I have no house anywhere, so where could I have a tekke? These twenty years not one single person has appeared who said that I have given him instruction in Sufism, and no court or police has found anyone. There is a third is called the Nine Illusion, Telvihat Tis'a, which I wrote long ago, and is a scholarly exposition of the truths the Sufi orders teach, but it is instruction in reality and is factual, it is not instruction in the Sufi way. Surely, it is an important duty of the Republican government, since it has taken freedom of conscience as a fundamental principle, to defend a truth to which the spirits of this nation's millions of forebears were devoted and in the cause of which they challenged the world, 
and a work that proves certain affirmative belief against the prevailing philosophy and to protect that truth's servants. The principles of such a republic would not bind up the hands of that weak servant and permit those numerous enemies of his to attack him. Thinking that the republic would hit me, I wrote this complaint. Indeed, I say, for us God suffices and he is the best disposer of affairs. A minor but important petition to the cabinet and directorate of deputies. Just as once I am going to explain a matter that looks to the country, nation and public order, although these last 30 years I have withdrawn from political life. It is as follows. Due to numerous signs, I am completely certain that there is a conspiracy on account of anarchy against myself, against this town of Emirda, and indirectly against this country, for making mountains out of molehills, an incident as significant as a fly's wing was shown to be as great as a mountain, and on account of anarchy and following a foreign plot I was made a pretext in this country, which is in need of calm and tranquility, and we, that is, the nurse students were attacked totally illegally and arbitrarily, although we are striving to save our fellow students from eternal perdition and doubts about the world to come. Due to baseless suspicions and in openly hostile manner I was blamed and a plot was hatched against this country and public order like setting light to gunpowder. It was like this. Although myself and my books and letters of 20 years had been acquitted after having been minutely scrutinized by three courts, and although for three years I had given up composing pieces and wrote only one letter a week, and had received no one apart from three or four tailors' apprentices who took turns to attend to my needs each for one day at a time, and although I had been granted my freedom and had not returned to my home region, a high-ranking member of the judiciary had the lock on my door smashed in a way that I had never in my life seen in order to make me angry and provoke an incident, and in order to insult and degrade me, illegally and maliciously conducted a search and seized my copy of the Quran and some Arabic writings as though they were subversive papers. In dominating fashion he told the officials here to tell two gendarmes to force me to put on a peaked cap in order to make a public spectacle of me and to take me to have my statement taken and to detain anyone who attempted to intervene. He said this during an important meeting when they were reading my absolutely true statements. There is no doubt at all that a malicious plan is being followed to make me angry with insults and abuse so as to disturb public peace and security. Unending thanks be to Almighty God that He has bestowed on me a state of mind whereby I would sacrifice my dignity and honor a thousand times over for the well-being of the wretched people of this country and to repulse calamities from them. So I decided to bear patiently all they did to me and the insults and abuse they intended. I am ready to sacrifice my life and honor a thousand times over for this nation's security and particularly for the worldly advantages and happiness in the next life of innocent children and the esteemed elderly and the wretched sick and poor. One indication of their blowing up this matter out of all proportion is this. The governor of Afyon and chief of police coming five times in ten days and the public prosecutor coming once because of a sick, elderly, weak, exile like myself who is all alone, and five aeroplanes following me for two days when I went out in the countryside, and five secret police being sent to join those who already spy on me and follow all my movements, and official orders being given to all the post offices to confiscate my correspondence, all this shows that they have been deluded into imagining an incident ten times more serious than the Sheikh Said and Menemen incidents. They must have made mountains out of molehills since they have adopted such a position. They supposed that I am like I was in my old life and that they could anger me by humiliating me. But they were wrong. 
We are striving with all our strengths to build a Quranic barrier against anarchy, like the barrier of Zulkarnain. Those who harass us are preparing the grounds for anarchy and even for communism. Indeed, if like in my early life in order to preserve the dignity of learning, I had refused to accept insults, and my true duty had not been the next life alone, and to save Muslims from the eternal nothingness of death, and like those who attack us we had worked solely for this world and negative politics, then those working on account of anarchy could have provoked an incident like the Sheikh Said and Menemen incidents. Moreover, to try to put a peaked cap on my head, although three courts and the police of several provinces these last 20 years have not legally interfered with my dress, and I have received no notification about the dress changes due to my solitude and being excused, such an attempt could have caused the hundreds of thousands of people who for the past 40 years have displayed brotherly interest in this country and especially in the teachings of certain affirmative belief to bring the very globe to anger in the midst of a terrible excitement and to weep as never before. In any event, by reason of numerous signs, I am completely certain that on foreign instigation that illegal treatment was meted out for the above mentioned reasons as provocation to destroy public regard for me. But, endless thanks be to Almighty God that as someone who is at the door of the grave, as no one is world weary, flees public attention and esteem, and has no desire for hypocritical fame and self-advertisement, I did not attach the slightest importance to their illegal insulting treatment. I refer it to Almighty God. I think of those who persecute me due to baseless suspicions being soon condemned to eternal nothingness when they die, and in truth I pity them. O my Lord, I pray, save their belief through the Risale Nur. Through the mystery of the Quran, transform everlasting non-being into the dispatch papers for eternal life, and I forgive them. Said Nursi. In his name be he glorified. The answer to a question asked on behalf of many people by a very young Kursali inner student who assists me. Question. Master, the prayers for rain have not been any use. They have yielded no result. Three times clouds gathered and then dispersed without producing rain. Why is this? The answer. Drought marks the time for prayers of this sort. They are not the cause or purpose of rain. Just as the prayers known as Husuf and Kusuf are performed at lunar and solar eclipses, and the evening prayer is performed at sunset, so times of drought are when the supplications and prayers for rain are offered. The reason for prayer and supplication, and their result, is divine pleasure, their benefits look to the hereafter. If worldly aims are intended in prayer and worship, and they are performed for that purpose alone, such prayers are null and void. For example, the evening prayers are not performed so that the sun should not set, and the Husuf prayers are not performed for the moon's reappearance. Similarly, if the prayers in question are offered for rain, it would be wrong. The sending of rain is Almighty God's business. We did our duty, we may not interfere in his concerns. It is true that the coming of rain is the apparent result of the prayers for rain, but the actual, true, and most beneficial result, and its finest and sweetest fruit is this, that from those circumstances everyone understands that it is not his father, or his house, or his shop that provides his livelihood and food, but a being who has disposal over the clouds as though they were sponges and the face of the earth as though it were an arable field, it is he who gives him his sustenance and nurtures him. A small child even, while pleading with his mother when he is hungry, understands in his tiny mind from that prayer for rain that the one who administers this world as though it were a house feeds him together with all the other children and their mothers. If he does not provide it, no one else can. In which case, the child tells himself that they should besiege him. He becomes a full believer. 
Six points will now be explained in connection with this. First point. The price for divine bondies and mercy is thanks. We have not offered thanks as we should have done. Not only have we not paid the price of divine mercy, we have attracted divine wrath with our sins and wrongdoing. At the present time, the human race has earned a dreadful blow with its wrongdoing, destruction, disbelief, and rebellion, and it has received such blows. For sure we too will receive our share. Second point. It says in a hadith, even the fishes at the bottom of the sea complain about sinners and the iniquities. It is due to this that the rains cease and our livelihoods diminish even. Indeed, at the present time, such sins and iniquities are perpetrated on the face of the earth that we are ashamed to seek divine mercy. Innocent animals even are in torment. Third point. It says in a verse, Beware the calamity which when it descends will not afflict only the wrongdoers, the innocent and oppressed will also be destroyed. For the wisdom in religion would be nullified if in the midst of a general calamity the innocent were to remain untouched by the conflagration. Religion is a test, an examination. Otherwise, evil people like Abu Jahil would affirm it, the same as those like Abu Bakr, the Varishis, may God be pleased with him. This is the reason innocents suffer in general disasters. Fourth point. Since at the present time due to trickery, exploitation, and bribery, numerous illicit matters have become admixed in possessions and sustenance, and farmers cannot really lay claim to their own produce, and out of ten people only two or three truly deserve divine mercy, and out of those who profit from the farmer's produce, five or six lost their right to divine mercy due to the wrongdoing and mixing in illicit things or neglecting to offer thanks. Fifth point. The Risalinur is a significant means of warding off calamities from this land of Anatolia. Just as almsgiving repulses calamities, so it has become clear through numerous signs and indications that it's spreading and being read repulses heavenly and worldly disasters as a sort of universal alms giving. This is a truth indicated by the Quran. Four times earthquakes occurred when its being written out and spread were being prevented, and when it was published again, they ceased. Then, when it was being read almost throughout Anatolia, as indicated by the Surah al Asr, it was a means of the Second World War not reaching Anatolia. Then, during these two months drought, when we were awaiting the total of free spread of the Risalinur in confirmation of the appeal court's decision for its acquittal since it was beneficial for the country, it was blocked entirely contrarily to our expectations and the treatises held by the court were not returned to their owners. As a consequence, this universal non-material giving, which is a means of repulsing calamities, was not realized and the drought began as a result of our sins. Sixth point. Drought is a calamity and the punishment for actions and should be met with grief and sorrowful beseeching and supplication and earnest repentance and prayers for forgiveness and seeking refuge at the divine court within the bonds of the Sunnah while shunning innovations in the way specified by the Sharia and with the prayers and worship particular to the situation. Also, since general calamities such as this result from the errors of the majority of people, they are repulsed by the majority of them repenting and seeking forgiveness. We Risalinur students do not attach much importance to this world and only look to the world for the sake of the Risalinur and therefore regard the present drought from this point of view. Thus, at the same time that a small part of the Risalinur was returned to its owners, in accordance with the decision given in Denis the court, and here, too, a small number of people started riding out pieces from it, a small amount of rain fell. But, because the freedom given the Risalinur was partial, the divine mercy also was minimal. God willing, in the near future, my copies will be returned too, and it will spread freely and fully, and divine mercy will also be universal. My dear loyal brothers, 
The Hezbollah Quran Al Muazzam possesses numerous characteristics like its both holding extraordinary importance and being extraordinarily beneficial, and no doubt occurring on its being read and its comprising the Quran's most meritorious verses and its bringing together all the principles and truths of the Risale Nur and its being a sacred summary of the Quran for those who cannot always find the opportunity to read the whole Quran and who are not Hafizes and its being a small sample of the printed Quran showing the correspondences of words and a bringer of good news and its showing the brilliant inimitability of the Quran with regard to its words and meanings and materially. During these blessed three months, it is a means to many blessings, lights, and merits, and has earned much good for those who have been involved in its printing and publication. For some reason or other, they have not included the following verses from Surah Ali Imran, which are two brilliant, circuit supports of the Risale Nur, and springs of the water of life, God testifies that there is no God but He, and the angels, and say, God is the owner of all sovereignty, they should be included. These days, while reading page 12, the verse, the dissemblers, struck my eye. I looked at the preceding page and saw who is better in religion than he who submits to God. I looked at the back of the page and saw that there were four verses that pointed to the Risale Nur. They are explained in the first ray. It occurred to my heart that this awesome verse looks particularly to this terrible, dark age of ours with its rife dissembling. I noted it carefully and felt certain. A sign is this. According to Jiffer and Abjad reckoning, indeed the dissemblers will be in the very pits of the fire, coincides precisely with the dates of the four degrees of dissembling. As follows. If the doublings are counted and if the hamzas which are not read and the ya in the fi which is not read are not counted, it makes exactly 1362 indicating this year. If the doubling in min and nar is counted as one nun and one lam, it makes 1342 coinciding exactly with the date of the first world war which gave rise to terrible dissembling. If the doubling is counted as two nuns and the silent hamzas and the ye are also counted, it makes 1366 and coincides with a difference of four with the jiffer value of the word darknesses, which is the lowest level of the dark dissembling and is compared with lights in many verses. If the silent letters are counted and the doubling in an nar is a lam, it makes 1300 and six exactly pointing the finger at and coinciding with the date of the terrible storms of disbelief and dissembling. Yes, two ras is four hundred, three fas and two lamps three hundred, one kaf, two doublet nuns three hundred, one mim, one sin, the other mim, one ye, one nun, that's one hundred, two, two nuns, that's a hundred as well, and the total 1300. One lamb, one calf, 50, a double tel, 8, and two long s, two hamzas, 4, and the total is 1362. The other three numbers can be compared with this. I also looked carefully at pages 12 and 13 and I saw that they correspond so closely to the Risale Nur and its students that they have not only a symbolic and indicative meaning, but also look particularly to the present century quite explicitly, including it is a singular element in its universal meaning. I understood this with certainty and offered endless thanks. If the calamities that have befallen us up to now in this work with the Risale Nur had been a hundred times worse, it still would have been nothing. We are the winners. With the thought that by smashing our unimportant ephemeral glass fragments, those calamities are gaining for us everlasting diamonds in the hereafter, I knew that we should be pleased and offer thanks in patience. Furthermore, I can give you the good news that their eighth attempt to poison me has again come to nothing. 
the guarantee of the Kausal Azam, indeed you are protected under the eye of Divine Grace, has once again been fulfilled. I send greetings to each and every one of my brothers and pray for them and seek their prayers in this blessed three months. From your brother who requests with all his spirit the innocent prayers of the many sinless children within the fold of the Risale Nur and of the blessed elderly whose supplications are not rebuffed. Said Nursi